Propaganda Z Code Sports System. Here we developed automated systems to help you win big every time. It doesn't matter what sport you're betting on, we've got you covered. So for today, though, we're going to talk about Major League Baseball and the games for May the 1st. And there's seven games on schedule. We're going to take over at six of them. So let's get started. So Major League Baseball season is about one month in. And things are starting to get a little more serious than they were the first month as teams are figuring out more what their teams are all about. Um, let's take a look at the first game, the Atlanta Braves and the New York Mets. In this National League East matchup, you can see the Braves come in average down. They are 3-3 three and three over their last six. While the Mets are ice cold up, they are 2-4 and four over their last six games. They just uh, broke a four-game losing streak by beating Washington. If you look at the over-under, you can see the Braves have been involved in games over the line in each of the last six, while the Mets have been over in just one out of their last three and three in their, out of their last six. Bryce Elder is scheduled to pitch for the Braves. He comes in with a uh, 2-0 record with a 2.17 ERA, and he has been a very good bet at plus $208 on the pitcher profit oscillator. The Mets have not yet named their starting pitcher. The score predictor has Atlanta by a 5-0 score with 52% level of confidence in the prediction. If you take a look at the power ranks in the carry, you can see Atlanta on a big upward trend from plus 5 back just a few days ago up to plus 24, while the Mets have dropped from 16 down to five. If you look at the head-to-head -head matchup, uh, the teams have not yet met a regular season game yet this season, so this will be the first ones. Um, the stability factor, Atlanta has been much more consistent with regard to their favorite underdog status. You can see they are at plus eight, and the Mets right now are at plus four. So in the end, what I believe about this game here is I think this is a Braves game. They're the better team, at least at the moment. I like the Braves in this one, but I like a lower scoring game, so I take the Braves and under the line. Next game we want to look at is Chicago and Washington. The Cubs come in average status. They are 2-1 and one over the last three and 3-3 three and three over the last six. And Washington is also average uh, four wins and two losses over their last six, and they are coming off of a loss. Neither team has named their starting pitcher as of yet. If you look at the over-under, you can see that the Cubs have been involved in games over the line four out of their last six, while Washington has been involved in under the line four out of their last six. If you take a look at that power ranks indicator, you can see that Washington on an upward trend there now at plus 22, while the Cubs on the downward trend over the last couple of days, they dropped from 14 to plus eight. The score predictor likes the Cubs by a six to one score with about 46% level of confidence in the prediction. As far as head-to-head -head goes, the teams have not yet met this season. Um, the stability factor, I always take, like to take a look at that. You can see that the Cubs have been very inconsistent with regard to their favorite underdog status at minus two, while Washington has been very stable so far this year at plus seven. In the end, I like the Cubs on this one, but I'm going to hedge and pass on the over-under bet. Cleveland and New York. The Guardians come in ice cold up. They had lost four out of their last five, and they broke that losing trend with their win against Colorado 4-1. to one. The Yankees, on the other hand, are burning hot, coming off of a two-game winning streak. If you look at the over-under, you can see that the Guardians have been involved in games under the line in four out of their last six, while the Yankees have been involved in games over the line in three out of their last four, so on opposite sides of the line. If you take a look at the score predictor, uh, seven four in favor of the Yankees, with confidence in prediction though of only 33%. And notice that neither team has named their starting pitcher as of yet, so take a look at that as it gets closer and closer to game time. You see on the power ranks indicator, the Yankees were at plus nine, they have climbed to plus 17, while Cleveland has dipped from uh, 13, they're all the way down to one just over the last uh, few days. If you look at the head-to-head -head matchup the teams met earlier this season, back on April 10th to the 12th, with uh, Cleveland winning one and the Yankees winning two, and these games were all in Cleveland, and the one game was a blowout while the other two were one-run contests. If you take a look at the volatility oscillator, how stable the two teams have been, you can see that Cleveland has not been very consistent with regard to their favorite underdog status there at minus three, while the Yankees have been very stable at plus eight. In the end, I like the Yankees in this one, but I'm going to pass on the over-under bet. Toronto and Boston. In this AL East matchup, you can see Toronto comes in burning hot, winners of their last four and five out of their last six. While Boston is averaged down, they have alternated wins and losses over their last six, 
therefore three and three over their last six. An interesting thing that we're seeing here with regard to the over under, which I don't often see at all. In fact, I think this is the first time I've seen this with all, all six games under for Toronto in the last six and all six games over for Boston in the last six. So it'll be interesting to see who uh, bets the over under in this one and in which direction. Uh, the score predictor has Toronto six to four over Boston with confidence in prediction of about 78%. If you take a look at the power ranks indicator, Boston on a steep upward climb from plus 23 to, pl or excuse me, from plus uh, seven up to plus 28 just over the last few days. And that was Toronto and Boston an increase from 20 or 17 up to uh, 24. So um, next thing I want to look at is the pitcher profit oscillator. I would normally look at that next, but the Pitchers have not yet been named for this game, so we don't need to look at that. But the stability factor, the volatility oscillator, as we always like to look at, you can see the stability factor here. And this is at plus 7 for Toronto and plus 2 for Boston. Boston was more stable up until just the last uh, week and a half or so. They were at plus 5, and they've been very inconsistent since then, dropping to plus 2. So in the end, I like the Blue Jays in this one. I think that I'm going to go with a higher scoring game. I'm going to go... Toronto in a game over the line. Next, we want to look at is San Francisco and Houston. This should be a really good matchup. You can see both teams playing very well. The Giants are coming off of a loss. They're five and one over their last six. Houston is also five and one over the last six. And you can see burning hot versus burning hot down. If you look at the over under, both teams have been involved in games over the line in four out of their last six. Although Houston involved in games under the line in their last two. The score predictor was 70% or almost 71% confidence, like Houston by a 7 to 5 score. The starting pitchers have not yet been named for this one either. I suspect that as we get closer to the to the game, that those will fill in. So we want to take a look back at this later on. Um, San Francisco climbed from plus 4 to plus 28 on the power ranks indicator, and Houston from 19 up to 26 uh, just over the last couple of days. Head-to-head -head wise, you can see the teams have not met this year. They did not meet last year either. They haven't met since 2021. Let's look at the stability factor again. Neither team has been consistent at all. Look at this, both in the negative right now. The highest that either team has been is over the last, uh, well, yeah, since the beginning of the season has been plus one. So neither team has been consistent with regard to their favorite underdog status. In the end, I like Houston. I think overall, clearly the better team, world champions. I think they'll win this one, but I'll pass on the over-under bet. We're not going to look at Cincinnati and San Diego. And the last one we want to look at is Philadelphia and Los Angeles. The defending National League champions started off slow, but they have won five out of their last six now, and they are burning hot. While the Dodgers have lost their last two, and they are averaged down three and three over their last six. In the over-under category, you can see the Dodgers involving games over the line in each of their last six. Or the Phillies over in three and under in three in their last six. The score prediction has Philadelphia by a very comfortable eight to three margin with a fair co uh, confidence of 62%. On the power ranks indicator, you can see that the Dodgers were at plus 29. They have dipped a little bit lately at plus 20. And the Phillies, after their skid, uh, climbed back up to plus 12. Uh, and the volatility oscillator, again, the stability factor, which I always think is pretty important to look at. You can see the Phillies are pretty stable and pretty consistent now at plus five after a rocky start. While the Dodgers have been very inconsistent most of the year, they're at minus one. So in the end, although it's on the road and it's uh, hard to bet against the Dodgers at home, I like Philadelphia. They're playing really good ball at the moment. I like Philadelphia in a game over the line. So there you have it. Those are the games from Major League Baseball for May 1st. Happy betting, and we will see you again next time.